Recently, you may have noticed that there was the Olympics happening in Paris, France, and that there was one person who won the Olympics more than anyone else. I am referring, of course, to Snoop Dogg. <laughs> and someone once said to me that Snoop Dogg seems to be trying to win the, the award for most side quests won. Well, we have our own Snoop Dogg in Calgary, uh, and this person seems to pop up at more random locations than I can imagine because they are everywhere, because they are someone that brings unity with them everywhere they go. They are a deeply talented performing artist, musician, who has an album coming out next month. Uh, so you can find them on everything, everywhere. And I am so, so blessed to call this person a friend. Please welcome to the stage the incomparable T. Fanny. so I can read my stuff, take a breath. There's nobody here but me, unless you guys make noise. Okay. So, I figured I would start by introducing myself. Um, unless, shoot, they already did that, but I wrote this anyway, so we're here now. Pause for giggles and stall time. Oh. Okay, this started out great. Okay, well. I'm T. Fanny, and I rap a little, I sing a tiny bit, I do stand-up comedy, never, um, but I am a self-proclaimed comedian, uh, but please don't judge by this performance, because this is actually like real stuff I'm trying to share with you guys today, I promise it's going gonna, it's gonna to go somewhere, it's going to be great. Okay, so this is my dad. Um, yeah, military, a follower, and all that, simple-minded. Um, but I love him. <laughs> um, it was definitely a struggle to be raised so strict, I tell you, but I'm not really sure how I feel about him coming from the military nowadays. I used to be super proud, uneducated, but super proud. Um, so this is the story of me understanding my dad. I promise it has to do with unity. <laughs> uh, just bear with me. Or don't, actually, because I can't actually tell you what to do. That's not really nice. So I guess I just, like, suggest you bear with me. OK, thanks. I was and will forever be a daddy's girl. I don't have a whole lot of memories, but the few that I have explain why I love my pops so much. One memory, though, went from negative to positive as I grew older and explored. As I grew older and explored. <laughs> <laughs> so, this is my high school grad picture. Um, it didn't have the lesbian on it. He, he, he used to call me a lesbian all the time. I never got it. I never thought it was funny. He would just give like a little chuckle to insinuate he was joking, and I would just get like super angry that he didn't know me, you know, like how dare you. Um, but my father is Caribbean, military, and I mean, a straight black dude. <laughs> like, um, I just figured that's not the path for me. I would always turn away in the locker rooms because I didn't want to be the rude, I felt like the dude in the room. Um, oh, you need help zipping down that dress? Okay, I'll just grab the girly girl because like, I don't want to be awkward, you know? <laughs> I didn't know anyone who was gay and anyone around who was like on TV and whatnot was not really held in great light of circles around me and my, my cousins and my family. So I just figured, um, whatever feelings that I have will just go away, go away, you know? I'll be normal soon, like how uh, Andrea just said, normal, normal. Um, little did I know that he actually just knew all along. Uh, I get my awkwardness from somewhere, and that's how math works, right? Um, he was just awkward, so that was his way of trying to tell me something sensitive about myself that I just didn't know yet. When I came out to my parents, they were a bit confused, but then my dad chuckled and he just said, I knew it. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, like, I understood that chuckle from way back when growing up. Um, he really did know all along and I just didn't believe him. Sorry. Um, so now fast forward to, I have to go on a vacation trip soon-ish, like November, um, with about 30 of my extended family for my dad's 60th birthday, which I'm sure a lot of my queer friends in the room can relate to the anxiety that's building up inside of me right now. <laughs> But you know, it's my dad's birthday, so gotta do what you gotta do. I was supposed to flip one of these over, I totally forgot to do that, anyways. You missed like four words of the speech, it's fine. 
So there's a group chat, and of course, my dad requested a pink shirt be worn as his birthday request. I left the group chat after that, because I, as you can only imagine, the turmoil and hysteria that that one little comment created in the group chat. So I was like, mm, okay, bye. <laughs> but my little brother called me the next day and raved about how proud he was of our father. And I was really confused, not gonna lie, because it's a rare moment. Not to be rude, but like, yes, very rare. I love you, Dad. I love you. I swear this is going somewhere. It's going somewhere. <laughs> so in the group chat, my pop said, what's the big deal? You know that we're all human, right? Like, who cares who you're effing unless you're effing them? Verbatim. I'm pretty sure that's what he said, verbatim. Yeah, yeah. Maybe not. I may have paraphrased like a little bit, a little bit. My dad said, would you guys say that about me if I was gay? Also, you know that pink is just like a color, right? <laughs> the way that my dad defended me made me realize he understood me way more than I gave him credit for. And yeah, I mean, I obviously I broke down and cried, whatever. <clears throat> <laughs> so allies working behind the scenes when we're not in the room, in the bathroom, etc., cetera, uh, defending our honor, just standing up for what's right, um, to me, that's unity. Did anybody count how many times I said, um? Okay, good, that was great. So, <laughs> unity. That was me stalling time, wasn't it great? <laughs> <Yeah>. <clears throat> unity to me is solidifying roots so deep that when the allies join, they have a clear path of what and where to go. So in the words of Queen Latifah, <clears throat> you ready? <laughs> U-N-I-T-Y, U-N-I-T-Y, that's a unity. Okay, that's it. <laughs> unity to me, unity to me is understanding equality isn't equal yet. We need to do real research, not just what's on the internet. I need to relieve some stress. Catch me whining this weekend at a soca fair. You know, you know. <laughs> I can feed a village if I can sell out the Met. I'm on to bigger, better plans, demanding they give back the lands to the people who knew unity like the back of their hands. If we were all united, we'd take flight. Elevate like the lightest of the light, freeing our, freeing our minds, but it's not just overnight. The unity will happen just in time. Step by step, like Whitney said. Wait, pause. Don't y'all wish that like Whitney was like out, out back in the day, you know what I mean? Like, I feel like I would have been so different. I would have had such a different life. <laughs> Whitney, oh my gosh. I wish you were out back in the day. Anyways, um, if we reach the peak unity we seek tonight in these seats, you know? Anyways. Thank you for listening to my tea talk. Woo!